Hello students. So as we are studying respiration, we know in case of human beings, respiration is mainly aerobic. That is, it occurs in presence of oxygen gas. Now, we have studied the structure of lungs and we know it is made up of tiny, tiny sac-like structures. Yes, the alveoli. So, this alveoli, it is a tiny sac-like structure and it is having a very rich blood supply. So, there is an entire capillary network over these alveoli and into this capillary network, the blood is running. So, this alveolar sac, okay, this alveolar sac, its walls, they are thin and it has a cavity within which is known as the alveolar cavity. Now, this alveolar cavity, this is the alveolar cavity here, okay. Now, this alveolar cavity, it is filled with air. So, as we inhale, as we inhale, we take in air. What happens? The space within the alveoli, the alveolar cavity, it is filled with that inhaled air. Now, inhaled air, it is having good amount of oxygen. So, inhaled air, it is rich in oxygen. It is having high oxygen content while the blood, the blood running in the capillaries over these alveoli, it is having poor quantity of oxygen. So, oxygen here is low. Fine. So, here we can see the alveolar air, it's having a very good quantity of oxygen and the air or the blood, the blood within the blood capillary surrounding these alveoli, it's having very little quantity of oxygen, low oxygen concentration. So what's going to happen? Oxygen would diffuse from the alveolar cavity into the blood. So oxygen would diffuse like this. Okay, Oxygen would diffuse from the alveolar cavity into the blood. So here we can see the alveoli surrounded by blood capillaries and what is this? This is the blood supply of the lungs. So inhaled air in alveoli has high oxygen concentration. Higher oxygen concentration is there than the oxygen concentration in the blood. Okay. Oxygen diffuses from the alveoli into the blood. So here we can see oxygen diffusing and moving from the alveoli into the blood. Initially it would move into the blood plasma and then within the blood there are red blood cells having the oxygen binding hemoglobin pigment. The hemoglobin pigment it's having very good affinity for oxygen gas. So oxygen from the plasma then would move into the RBC it would bind with the hemoglobin to form a temporary molecule yes a temporary compound the oxyhemoglobin. And in this form, most of the oxygen would get transported from here to the entire body. Okay. Now, it passes first into blood plasma and then combines with hemoglobin in the RBC forming the compound oxyhemoglobin. Now, talking about CO2. So, the case for CO2 is different. We know when respiration is performed within the cells of the body, then during that respiration, during that aerobic respiration, CO2 is produced as a waste product. Now, the CO2 from cells of the body, it is transported into the blood passing through the tissue. And from that blood, okay, all the CO2 through the blood, it reaches the heart and then again at the level of lung alveoli, the blood supply of the lung alveoli. Students, that is very rich in CO2. Okay, that is very rich in CO2. Again, the same diagram. Alveoli and the blood supply of alveoli. Okay, blood is running in these capillaries. Now, the alveolar air, the air that you inhaled, that is having less amount of CO2. So, CO2 is low in alveolar air. Whereas, CO2 is high in the blood because CO2 produced at the level of cells of the body. It is being transported into the blood. So, blood is having good quantity of CO2, higher concentration of CO2. Alveolar air, poor concentration, poor quantity of CO2. So, what will happen? Carbon dioxide gas would diffuse from the blood into the alveolar air. Is that okay? So, here we can see. 
CO2 diffusing from blood into the alveoli. CO2? Yes. Now, something very important. The students, the solubility of carbon dioxide gas in water is much more than the solubility of oxygen gas in the water. Is that okay? Now, we know the blood plasma, it's chiefly composed of water. Fine. So, CO2 is transported mainly dissolved in plasma, whereas oxygen is mainly transported in the form of oxyhemoglobin. Though some quantity of oxygen passes or is transported dissolved in plasma too and some quantity of CO2 is transported by help of hemoglobin pigment too. But here we are talking about which is transported in which particular form. So remember CO2 is transported mainly in dissolved form because it is good, it is well soluble in water. Okay, so CO2 being more soluble in water than oxygen, it is mostly transported in dissolved form in our blood. Okay, now after understanding this question time. So here we have a question on the screen for us. Given below is diagrammatic sectional view of human respiratory system, which set of three parts out of one to six as labeled here have been correctly identified. So certain region of this human respiratory systems, they have been labeled from one to six and we have to find which are correctly identified. So first option, here let's first try to understand the first option. Okay, so as we understand the human respiratory system, as we discussed about it, we know this is the trachea being split into, yes, the bronchi, primary, secondary, tertiary bronchi, from bronchi, Bronchioles are formed and finally there are those sac like structure the alveoli. So here these labeling one it is depicting those bronchioles. Two towards the end yes we find the alveoli or the alveolus. So second is that now third option this is the trachea. Fourth option common passage the pharynx. Fifth option Yes, the larynx region, fifth option is denoting and sixth option, the bronchi. Okay, so the correct answer here, option one is saying first labeling is of bronchioles. Okay, correct. Fourth is of trachea. Fourth is not trachea. So this option one is incorrect. Option two, they are saying third is bronchi. Third is bronchi. Wrong, it's trachea. Again, incorrect. Third option, they are saying first option is bronchioles. Yes, we know that. Second is alveolus. Yes, we know that. Third, no, okay. Next is sixth option. Sixth is depicting, yes, the bronchus. So, this is the correct option. Let's go for fourth also. They are saying second is alveolus. Second is alveolus, right. Fourth is larynx. Fourth is not larynx, it is pharynx, of course. Option three is the correct one. Yes. Okay. Now, next question here for us. Which condition would result in higher rate of movement of oxygen from alveolus into the blood capillaries? So, when more and more oxygen would get transported from the alveolus space, alveolar cavity from the alveolus into the blood capillary? Let's check out. So they are saying concentration of oxygen in blood capillary, if it is high and concentration of oxygen in alveolus, if it is also high, both are high, there should be a concentration gradient and what they want, they want more and more oxygen to move, okay, oxygen to move at high rate from the alveolus into the blood capillary, from the alveolus into the blood capillary, they want movement in this direction. So here concentration of oxygen in alveolus here it should be high and here it should be low then movement will be fine. So first option is incorrect. Second it's actually reverse. They are saying in blood oxygen concentration should be high whereas it should be reverse. Third option low in blood right high in the alveolar space correct this is the right option and fourth again both low no, this cannot be the answer third option is the correct answer now you know how to solve it 
okay next question here for us which of the following statement is true about entry of air into human lungs so they are talking about entry of air in human lungs and which of the given options are correct so they are saying air enters the body and travels to the lungs through mouth and nose okay air enters body and travels to lungs through esophagus and gullet gullet esophagus what is this yes esophagus it's a component of digestive system what is gullet Gullet is the opening of esophagus, so this cannot be the answer. Next option, air enters the body and travels to lungs through windpipe and spiracles. The spiracles, they are found in insects, not in case of human being. They are asking, what is true about entry of air into human lungs and not about insects? So, again incorrect, air enters the body and travels to lungs through nose and gullet. Again, gullet is the opening of esophagus. Epiglottis. Is the flap like a structure over the glottis? What is glottis? Yes, the opening of windpipe or the trachea. So, first option is correct. Okay, next question here for us. Which of the following is correct regarding larynx? Which of the following is correct regarding larynx? It houses vocal cords larynx the sound box yes it has got those vocal cords which vibrate and that's why or that's how sound is produced so when you exhale and you want to utter some word then those vocal cords they are vibrating at particular frequency and your tongue is also helping in the same but then sound is being produced so yes it houses vocal cords correct located in interior region of neck yes larynx is located in the interior region of your neck it is organ made of cartilage. Larynx is a cartilaginous structure and it connects the pharynx to the trachea. We discussed after the pharynx comes the trachea and on the upper region of the trachea there is located the larynx. So this statement is also correct. All of the above are correct statements. So fourth option is the answer. Okay, now next question here for us. The diagram given shows flow of oxygen in our body so how oxygen flows in our body we can see by help of this diagram but maybe some regions are incorrect here which of the labeled arrows they are you know incorrectly drawn let's check out heart okay they are saying the arrows okay they are or this diagram it is showing flow of oxygen so these arrows are showing in which direction oxygen is flowing and we have to probably find out which arrows are incorrectly being labeled or they are showing wrong things so oxygen from heart they are saying from all parts of the body oxygen is coming to heart while reverse happens so this is wrong okay it should have been like this oxygen from heart reaches different parts of the body this is wrong next the s arrow is wrong p from nose oxygen reaches the windpipe this p is correct okay next they are saying from lungs oxygen reaches windpipe no from windpipe it reaches the lungs so this is also incorrect okay it should have been like this next from lungs oxygen reaches heart from lungs oxygen reaches heart okay fine the oxygen it reaches lungs and then the blood gets oxygenated and then oxygenated blood gets into heart so that is also correct these two are the incorrect ones okay these two are incorrect so s and q s is incorrect q is incorrect so fourth option should be the answer yes we are right okay next question here for us ios based question this question it came in ios olympiad complete the passage of inhaled air so here a passage of inhaled air has been mentioned but certain regions you have to tell so a b c what they are denoting let's check out nasal cavity so air inhaled air it will pass from nasal cavity into the pharynx into the larynx from larynx into the trachea so a should be trachea here a is trachea from trachea into the bronchi from bronchi into the bronchioles 
and from bronchioles yes into the alveolar sac so option b or option 2 is the correct answer again an ius based question pouch like air sacs at end of bronchioles what they are called pouch like air sacs at end of bronchioles what we call them trachea no they are tubes alveoli yes this is the answer we don't need to go forward it's correct bronchus pharynx they cannot be the answer again this question it came in ios now next question again ios based question trachea bronchi lungs diaphragm they are part of digestive system no respiratory system of course not nervous system and skeletal system so this is the answer the epiglottis it guards the opening of so students it's an nstsc based question epiglottis guards the opening of esophagus larynx trachea bronchioles now since both larynx and trachea both are here so we know larynx is over the top of trachea so of course epiglottis would guard the opening of larynx but if among the options larynx was not mentioned then trachea would have been the answer but since larynx is there so larynx is going to be the answer name the area at the back of the throat that connects buccal cavity with esophagus okay area at back of throat connecting buccal cavity with the esophagus in this area digestive and respiratory system cross each other without even seeing the options we can guess the answer yes it is pharynx so an stsc based question larynx pharynx salivary glands all of these pharynx is the answer so students if you find such questions very well you can answer them thank you mm -hmm.